What's up, boxing fan? This is Anna here to do another boxing analysis. This analysis is between, it's a post fight analysis between Andre Berto versus Jesus Soto Coraz. What a night of boxing! Just the, I mean, I can actually do three different analyses all in one, post fight analysis in one. But let's go to the main event first and then we'll go down the line. Man, the main event amazing action. I didn't think it was going to be that good. I thought Carras was just going to be okay. You know, I mean, he's shown he got heart, you know, he has skill, but nothing on this level. I mean, he looked A level today. I mean, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful combinations. I love Jesus Carras' uh, composure, uh, keeping his long, long arms that he has on that about 5'11 frame. He was picking his shots very well. Something I'm not used to seeing Karaz do. And another thing, he was touching him and then hitting him with the hard shot. That's what a great boxer does. A good boxer, he can land his big power shots because, you know, he just knows location. But a great boxer touches his opponent. Shoulder, arm, neck, chin. Just touch. Then you land your power shot. Touch. Then you land your power shot. A little bit of head movement overhand right and I thought in the first round he was gonna get Berto out of there I was impressed with Berto's heart but it, but, but Berto he's always gonna have heart like he said I grew up tough I'm from Haiti you know and those people they go through hell in Haiti so I understand where that heart comes from but honestly big guy you need to retire I mean I'm not the one to judge that I'm gonna say that because me being a boxer myself I know if somebody was saying that to me I'd be like what are you talking about? Like, why would you tell me to retire? But it's just from a fan's point of view and seeing how much punishment, how many wars. They always talk about my gente, you know, mi gente, Miguel Angel Cotto. They always talk about the Boricua and talk about he's so uh, washed up, he's damaged goods. Fuck you, motherfuckers. Like I said, he's going to show you, you know, in October what he's going to do with Delvin Rodriguez and dispose of him. But anyway, back on topic, enough ranting. Andre Berto did a great job with only one shoulder. I think his shoulder got hurt in the fourth or fifth round, maybe even the seventh. He was fighting that long, all the way to the twelfth round. And, um, I mean, it's just a crazy how his right shoulder just gave out on him, but it makes sense. If you understand boxing, you would understand that too much muscle creates so much tension in all your joints. And when you have so much muscle, and it doesn't get massaged properly. It's almost like Manny Pacquiao on his calves. If you don't have the proper uh, massaging on your muscles, they will cramp up. And if you throw a crazy shot, they can't come out the socket. It can't happen. And uh, this is not his first injury. I believe his left bicep, something was wrong with it. Um, he had to get surgery. I think it's going to be the same thing with this right one, you know. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's just muy, muy triste for his career. But he still showed the uh, heart. People still going to give him his credit. I don't know if he's going to go in the Hall of Fame, but he has fought a nice amount of world champions. And Hezo Soto Carras is now, in my eyes, I'm a believer. He showed me that he can really, really, really punch with both hands. That left hook looks similar, not the same, but similar to the Lucas Matisse fight versus, um, uh, who, oh yeah, Lamont Peterson. They both or hooking with each other and what they always say you don't hook with a hooker and that's what he did boom through the left hook perfectly landed on the chin good night Berto. Berto got back up like the heart that he has but there was nothing there he was actually walking back to his corner so I mean in my eyes it kind of seemed like either he was super duper dazed or he just knew the fight was over with and the ref was gonna stop it anyway great great stoppage by the ref no use of him dying in the ring. Even though that's probably what he would have won in any way. But anyway, great night of action. It's like Al Bernstein and many other people said. When have you ever seen a card? When have you ever seen a card where three of the fights were amazing? I mean, everything that De La Hoya and Richard Schaefer could ask for from boxers. Have heart. Come back with combinations. Show your mental fortitude. Behave like a fighter, like Teddy Atlas always said. All that was displayed tonight. Let's go to the Keith Thurman fight. Keith Thurman 
fought in hard punching Argentine. I mean, this guy was the goods. Muy fuerte. He had the Lucas Matisse type of tattoos, even though the Argentina flag that he had on chest was dope. Uh, and the Jesus tattoo he had on his wife was dope too. And dude was just there to fight. He was there to win. You know, ching on. He had big on it. And he came to win. But Keith Thurman showed the skills prevail over all. Yes, the guy had balls. He was coming forward, throwing overhand rights. He was landing at times. Keith Thurman, I see now, is susceptible to getting hit with the overhand right. But I'm a big fan of him. At first, I wasn't all the way sold on him. And I was just like, eh, he might be pretty good. He might not be. Let's see how his chin holds up against a hard South. I'm going to keep it real South American puncher. And that's what he fought. And um, he showed his resilience. He showed his mental fortitude. And he behaved like a fighter. When the guy was inside, he was doing a great job staying inside. When it was time to box, Thurman was boxing. It was very competitive, very close, but when it all came down to it, Thurman just landed the better body shots. That body shot, you get hit right in the middle of your belly button, that does damage. It basically uses when somebody pivots and they throw a punch just like that. Pivot and throw. The straight, pivot, throw. When somebody throws a left hook in the orthodox stance to your body, and you have your your hands like this, or you have your hands halfway like that. You get hit in that belly button, or even in on the hip. I mean, it's crazy. It's excruciating pain. And I give him credit for even getting back up that first time. But that that one kidney shot that Thurman had threw, and then he came up top. That's what really ended it, people. And Thurman can really punch. I see why he called himself one time. But um, hey. He's a power player at 147 pounds. Watch out, people. And he has great amateur background, so follow that. So if he needs to box in a fight, I'm pretty sure he can do that. Now let's get to the second fight. I'm talking fight of the year. One of the best fights. We'll be talking about this fight for years. If you're a true boxing fan, you don't care about, oh, somebody's hyping this person up to be so much. This guy used to spar with El Inca. And I know I say about him a lot, talk about him a lot. Edwin Valero, 27-0, 27 knockouts. He used to spar that man constantly. He said that was the hardest puncher. After this fight, I've never seen El Pantarita give so much credit to the opposed, you know, the other fighter. And the other fighter threw a lot of punches. I mean, like 1,100 punches. And it was just amazing to see. Now... Omar Figueroa, his hands, he has problem with his hands because he punches so hard and he gets so much leverage when he pivots and he throws short shots. Very short shots. Everything is short. You know. But he lacks defense. That's why he was getting hit with certain punches. And uh, that guy was just taking his time. He was he had so much heart, you know. That that guy, that uh, Bushido guy, I mean, this is just amazing. I think his uh, name was uh, Arakawa. I could be wrong, but I think it's Arakawa. Uh, the guy was amazing. I want to see that guy fight in the U.S. again. He he earned that right. He fought for um, the new fans that he has now in San Antonio and all over the world and his Japanese people. That's what happens when you have pride and you show it in the ring. I mean, just so many punish, just so much punishment. But he showed. Every, he even got back up and was like, "I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna let this guy defeat me." And you can tell he has fun. That's the big thing about boxing. You have to have fun in the ring. Omar Figueroa loves a great fight. The Japanese guy, Yawakawa, I mean, Awakawa, loves a great fight. That's what the fans want to see. I'm pretty sure Oscar's going to be begging whoever the guy is to put him back on Showtime. I mean, great night of action, people. Omar Figueroa got the win, well deserved. He fought hard. He finally faced some adversity in his career, and he needs that. A lot of people say, oh, he can get hit a lot, he's human, punch it back. Go fuck yourself. That guy can punch, he can box. He's long, he's rangy. Great. How many long, rangy people do you see that are great inside fighters to throw 10 and 12 and 14 punch combinations? That's hard work and dedication in the gym, my people. But anyway, tell me what you think in the comment section below, and um, I will get back to you with more boxing analysis. Oh, by the way, Jesus Soto Carras, giving you claps. Round of applause. You threw 1,324 punches. Chingo to the bone, man. Y'all threw safe. Peace.